Payavanur Commission of 1975 and Chinna Paredi Commission of 1990 carried out meticulous detailed study to assess socio-economic and educational backwardness among communities in Karnataka. Their study concluded that huge population within the Muslim community was socio-economically and educationally backward. Earlier this week, the BJP government in Karnataka woke up one day and without scientific study, without empirical data, without consultation, decided that these sections within the Muslim community are no longer socio-economically or educationally backward and hence do not deserve reservation under the other backward classes category. Denying this marginalized group of people from within the Muslim community their constitutionally guaranteed right. Why? Because elections are around the corner in Karnataka. On this episode of State of Play, I tell you why experts insist that the Basavaraj Bomai government's decision to scrap quota of 4% under the OBC category for some section within the Muslim community is not just legally untenable, but also against the basic tenets of social justice. Welcome to the show. I am Anusha Ravi Sood. If there was any doubt that communal issues in Karnataka, whether it is denying entry into schools for Muslim girls wearing hijab or call for economic boycott of Muslims or BJP leaders like K.S. Ishwarapa publicly stating that the party does not need Muslim votes or other leaders of the BJP repeatedly invoking Tipu Sultan and Savarkar were all aimed at polarization and appeasement of the Hindu vote bank in the run-up to Karnataka assembly election, then this move of the Basavraj Bomai government to take away reservation meant for backward classes and sections within the Muslim community and divide it between two dominant communities, Vokaligas and Lingayats in the run-up to election, will put all those doubts to rest. So what has the BJP government done? The Basavraj Bomai cabinet decided to scrap the 4% quota given under the OBC reservation for backward classes, subsects, subcasts within the Muslim community under 2B category and divided 2% and 2% between two dominant communities, Vokaligas and Lingayats. With this, under the OBC umbrella, Muslims get zero reservation while Vokaligas now will be eligible for 6% reservation and Lingayats will be eligible for 7% reservation. This is the Basavraj Bumai cabinet's plan. If there were any doubts that this was an entirely political move, one need not look further than Union Home Minister Amit Shah's speech that he delivered in Karnataka on Sunday where he justified his government's move. What Amit Shah said is pretty similar to what Basavraj Bumai said when he attempted to justify his cabinet's decision to take away 4% quota meant for backward classes within Muslim community. This is what the chief minister said. The constitution does not allow for reservation on the basis of religious identity, religious minorities. Muslims can now avail Reservation under the EWS category, which is 10%, which is much bigger than the 4% that was exclusively meant for them under 2B of OBC. Three, that they have done justice for all. In the next few minutes, I will tell you why all these three points that the Chief Minister made are either misleading or simply incorrect. The Havanur Commission report, a thoroughly scientific, celebrated report, for its accuracy, which also became the prelude to the Mandal Commission report, categorically identified several sections within the Muslim community as socio-economically and educationally backward. The Havanul Commission report recommended 6% reservation under the OBC category for Muslims in Karnataka. This recommendation was not based on the Muslim identified as a religious minority. The Commission's report categorically stated that several subsets, subcasts, several groups within the Muslim community were socio economically backward. Hence, the reservation that was given to the community was not based on religious minority tag, it was based on socio economic and educational backwardness. Even in Karnataka's list under 2B, the state recognizes Muslims, including 17 subcasts and subsects. Yes, there are subcasts and subsects within the Muslim community. You don't believe me? 
take a look at the union government's central list of OBCs rather, where the central list categorically states that OBC reservation is also extended to Muslims, excluding specific subcasts, about nine subcasts, which also include Bora Muslims, Sheikh, Pathan, Mughal, etc. The Vasaraj Bombay cabinet justified its move by stating that Muslims can now avail reservation under the 10% EWS quota, attempting to say that 10% is much bigger than the 4% quota that was being given under OBC category to Muslims. What the government fails to understand is that there is a world of difference between socio-economic educational backwardness and economic weakness, which essentially is simply financially not being very well off. On the other hand, socio-economic educational backwardness is much more complex, layered and is a result of centuries of oppression and marginalization. While assessing the socio-economic and educational backwardness, the Havanur Commission took into consideration many, many yardsticks, including representation in government jobs, educational qualification, property, land holdings, basic amenities, housing, leadership vacuum etc. when it made its recommendation on who is socio-economically backward and who is not. The Basavraj Bombay government has simply thrown all of these parameters right out the window to state that EWS as a category will be enough for historically marginalized sections within the Muslim community to claim quota or reservation. Moreover, in Karnataka as of today, the EWS quota does not even exist. The state government has not adopted EWS quota for implementation within Karnataka, within educational institutions or state government jobs in Karnataka. Even if it were to adopt it going forward, the government is essentially putting historically marginalized sections within the Muslim community, socio-economically backward sections, into a pool with dominant forward communities that have historically been socially and educationally forward. Putting marginalized Muslims into a pool with communities like Brahmins, Vaishyas, who have historically been socially dominant, educationally forward, is like asking a fish to climb a tree with a squirrel. This is not just unfair, but unequal, squared, and definitely not a level playing field. Historically, educationally and socially forward communities and castes, those communities and castes that have social capital will definitely and without doubt fare better than those communities that have been oppressed, have been marginalized, have been denied equal opportunity for centuries. That was the very purpose of reservation, to create a level playing field for socially oppressed classes. The state government with its move or the state cabinet with its proposal is attempting to take away the core purpose of reservation in this scenario. And the last claim of Basavraj Bhumar that his cabinet has done justice to everybody. This claim has been vehemently opposed not just by Muslim leaders but also opposition parties like the JDS and the Congress who insist that this move is not just against the tenets of social justice but is a deliberate attempt to create rift within communities and pit one community against another, hoping for electoral outcomes as the state gears up to head into assembly elections. The Bomai cabinet is proposing to scrap reservation meant for the marginalized within the Muslim community and divide it up between two socially dominant communities like Vokaligas and Lingayats. Neither the Vokaligas nor the Lingayats have asked for their quota to be hiked at the cost of marginalized communities within the Muslim community. Neither the Vokaligas nor the Lingayats have asked for someone else's quota to be snatched away and given to them. Both these communities are not just the largest land-owning communities in Karnataka, but they also have strong political representation. They have social capital. Karnataka has had six chief ministers from the Vokalika community and nine chief ministers from the Lingayat community, which will give you an insight into how politically influential these two communities are. Well, the BJP government moving ahead and increasing quota to these dominant communities, taking it away 
from a marginalized section within the Muslim community should tell you how important a role these two communities play in the elections of Karnataka. Even if you set aside the concept of social justice for a minute, experts have raised questions on whether the Karnataka cabinet has even done due diligence in following process when it has attempted to make changes to reservation matrix. The government hasn't even relied on empirical data or carried out studies. The Indraswani case judgment by the Supreme Court very categorically states that empirical studies are mandatory if any changes, additions or subtractions from the reservation matrix need to be made. This data is mandatory, study is mandatory. The Karnataka government has not adhered to any such study. In fact, the Backward Classes Commission recently submitted its interim report and while submitting it, the commission has asked the government to hold off from making any changes to the reservation matrix until it submits its full report. South first spoke to a few members of the Backward Classes Commission who state that they too are surprised with the government's move and it seemed that it, it had much more to do with politics than to do with scientific empirical decisions. In fact, the commission is still in the process of collecting information from district, taluk and village level on representation of caste communities in educational institutions and government jobs. Just about 50 or 60 percent of the information is with the commission so far. It basically means that the Bomai government or the Bomai cabinet has taken this decision in the absence of a final report by the commission. There is no empirical data. There are no detailed studies. But what is there for everybody to see is that a democratically elected government that is entrusted with ensuring the welfare of its citizens has chosen to take away reservation from a section of its marginalized voters. Reservation which is a constitutional right of these sections to give it to much more dominant and politically influential communities, raising questions on social justice. If the introduction of the EWS quota was the first step, this decision of the BJP government in Karnataka is the next in attempting to subvert the very purpose of reservation in India. A move to nullify historic and social oppression by ignoring socio-economic and educational yardsticks. If this is a test case, then oppressed classes across the country have much to worry about. This could be an indication of what is to come next. Do stay tuned to South First. We at South First will keep a close watch on how this story develops. Thank you so much for watching.